Thank you, everyone. So welcome to this session about um, the three dimensions of the agile leadership. It's a model that I've defined, so I, I love to share it with you. And uh, first of all, what's, what are the three dimensions, just to, to give you some references? I think that we all act as leaders. I think everyone is a leader, all of you, all of us. That's really my mantra. And my job is to be a leadership midwife, so connect people, support people to connect to their leadership. So the three dimensions of, of leadership, I, um, uh, the, the, I developed the model, is the inner leader. What is the leader in me? The second is how do I show up as a leader with my pairs, co-leadership. And the third dimension is me as a leader at service of my ecosystem. Uh, now, I've just said that I believe that everyone is a leader. And maybe that's a little bit controversial. I don't know. Do you, what do you think? Am I right or do you think that... Uh, Agree? Agree? Someone that doesn't agree, say, well, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Um, why am I saying that? Because I was sitting and uh, say, well, well, I don't know anyone, and maybe you know, but I don't know anyone that wants someone else to lead his or her life. Everyone wants to lead her own life. <laughs> so if that is true, that means that everyone is a leader. <laughs> and we can lead different things. So these are the, um, the, the, the three dimensions of leadership, and we will go to these three really quickly. Uh, Woohoo! 45 minutes. So, uh, but before, before that, uh, Leadership, leader, 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 it's a, one of those baggy words. Again, we can talk uh, a 72 hours marathon about what's, um, what's leadership. So to make it more concrete, I'd like to sp spend, you to spend 30 seconds and think of a leader who is a role model for you. Someone that say, this is a leader and she or he is a role model for you. And if you want to share and say why, quickly. Yeah? I think it's the values of that person, like, yeah. you know, uh, that inspires us a lot. So it's mainly the values, and, I would say. And do you have an example? Do you have a role model, someone you admire as a leader? I do, uh, in my. <laughs> <laughs> like, and why then? <laughs> Again, it's, it's based on that person's values, right? Like, it's not that because that person is powerful or like, you know, has a lot of skills, but it's because that person, the, the set of values that that person has, I really admire that. That yeah. led me to, you know, inspire. Oh, thank you. That was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, that leader is my dad. Yeah. Uh, I look up to him uh, in a lot of uh, ways. It's because of the guidance that I get from him. Um, I feel comfortable sharing anything, and I know I can make mistakes in front of him. Um, and I feel inspired uh, when I speak to him. So I think that makes him a great leader and my role model. Thank you so much. A last sharing, if, yeah. I think you. For me, my mother is my role model because uh, uh, I lost my father when I was in plus one. So my mother uh, took care of me and uh, my sister 
and uh, now i am sitting here is because of my mom her support she did a lot of hard work and of course uh, without her uh, i am not here so my role model is always uh, she has a lot of patience and the listening skills so and the understanding capacity so that is i think uh, one of the great thing i learned from her is uh, be patient and uh, listen and understand and react so for me my mom is always a leader thank you thank you so much so a roar of applause what is your name myself tanuj sorry tanuj 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 so, yes so a roar of applause for for panuj mom please <laughs> thank you thank you so much we have one more you the, uh, one more yeah <laughs> so uh i consider yeah. just like he said about his uh, mother my father is my role model mm -hmm. okay so uh, he was in the indian army he was in a very high ranking he is a doctor and he expired this last week mm -hmm. after 86 okay so i am still grieving his death and i found the way he used to manage people and all without uh, people think that he if he is in the defense he is in the military so he must be having something which uh, you have to command and control but he was not like that mm -hmm. and and i have seen many people uh, hate many people okay there are people who have less set of people who hate and there are more set of people who you know don't like uh, i have seen uh, those set of people who have got many uh, number of people who are in their hate list but my dad was never in their hate list okay. so that is why i felt very proud about him so yeah that's what i felt yeah so i that's why i considered him as a leader thank you so much uh, i i want to share a different perspective here what building on what tanuj said right every mother is a role model yeah so can anyone here say your mother is not a role model right every mother is a role model so it's it's same it's a case for me it's a case for him it's case for you or anybody take anybody for thank you. as an thank example thank you thank you for those so mothers are caring mother a model so oh, the last one i'm, I'm yeah. very touched by your just uh, yeah Uh, as far as role model is concerned i don't believe in any human being to be a role model for me i do not have anyone okay but uh, nature is the one which inspires me the most and it motivates yeah. me a, a lot yeah. so whenever i have to look forward to see to gain inspiration or to gain motivation i look forward towards the nature that's all yeah. thank you for that and each time is uh, i have that answer is actually i don't have any role model but in it's what behavior of someone is inspiring <laughs> uh so you you said that leaders from the role models are inspiring because they are caring that's mostly what we inspire uh, inspiring with a vision uh, aligned values um so that that's about leadership as a role model and now more less generic is Do you have a manager in your professional experience that was the best manager you ever had someone that you really admired Yes First there or have two I had in fact many I should say uh the current company that I'm working for is my ninth organization out of nine I had uh, I would say five to six managers as very good managers why uh, because somebody was mentioning about the values right Eat the val values value yeah, system values. that they had yeah. yeah that was predominantly the best thing and uh, these days we are talking talking more about the emotional intelligence and stuff okay. like that right but then these managers two decades ago um, did you know had these elements in them okay and they were actually showcasing that in practice Yeah. Thank you. So Thank emotional you. intelligence values. The second one, and then I'll move forward, so I can keep my promise to go to the. <laughs> yeah, they, they try it. So for uh, for me, the best manager that I worked with uh, was someone who provided extreme security and safety, sense of safety to the whole team, into the difficult waters, as well as the direction when the. When the when the space is very cloudy and foggy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so both of that that we are not lost, 
but we would be getting into the right direction, hang in. Even if it is difficult water, we are together, and therefore the ship will survive. Thank you for that. So that was psychological safety. I don't think the micros work too, very well, but the point was creating a space of psychological safety. So once again, uh, a manager that has, has leadership is the one that creates that safety. Is our models are leaders at service, which is the third part. That's uh, mainly it's what I um, I had as usually as inputs. I'm I'm going forward, and thank you for your all uh, all your powerful answers to say the um, that I kind of inspired and and, uh, and summarized the archetypes of leadership in these three types. And your, with your answers, I don't really was, well, all of them were mentioned, but um, these are the four ones. Well, a model is just a model, so uh, it's uh, definitely not the best. The one is the visionary, which is uh, very aligned with uh, his or her um, values and the, uh, therefore inspiring. The guide is the one that supports individuals and emergence, supports others. The rebel is the disruptive, the one that really is, brings the voice of diversity. This is the kind of leader that can be ridiculized at the beginning because it's, it's um, he, he, uh, her voice or his voice is not, not in the mainstream. And the connector, the one that fosters inclusiveness, one that connects and belonging. Um, I will give quick examples of the different types, they, just to give you some uh, references. I think that Steve Jobs is a kind of visionary. He has a vision, crazy about the vision, go straight forward. And people that are, in, uh, are inspired by that vision, they follow or uh, they admire or try to be like that or admire uh, their work. Uh, artists can be like that. Steve Jobs was, a, was an artist. Um, so align and, and inspire people. The guide one, <laughs> maybe the most popular one is that supports individuals by helping reveal the best versions of them. And I think, really, that this is the type of leader that we most admire. In my observation and, and working with you, this is the type of leadership that most admire. That's why I just, you said mothers are role models, because they are guiding. Um, it's not about themselves, it's about the others. <laughs> uh, the rebel, was I, I was talking also yesterday about Greta, is disruptive. This is the voice of novelty. The one that hacks a system. It knows that a system has uh, flaws and voice them. It's the voice that points to the elephant in the room. So this is um, the, the rebel going to, how are we? OK, I think we're good in timing. The, and the connector is, is the influential one. It's, that a, it's a guardian of inclusiveness and also cares that each voice in a space are heard. Uh, and while well, I'm giving um, Angela Merkel, no, Angela Merkel, um, Germany's uh, counselor for many, 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 many years. Um, there's, a, there's a characteristic of leadership that we might implicitly think that every leader has, uh, that, and that is being charismatic. I think that. That was true for me. It's, a leader is, is charismatic. But actually, for this different types of leadership, being a leader doesn't necessarily mean to be charismatic. I don't know what you th think about Angela Merkel, but it's kind of opposite of being charismatic. 
it was a tiny little lady that uh, you kind of don't see actually in a room. And um, I think it was in 2017 or 18, um, bear with me if that's not quite correct. She was, um, uh, she was classified, whatever that was for, uh, the most influential person in the world. <laughs> because why? Because he has this art to connect people, see what, who should talk to whom. <laughs> So these are the four ones, and I let you with this. I go. I will. I just wanted to give some example, and I leave you another thirty seconds, maybe less. See what type of leader do you think you are? If anyone wants to say, but uh, we also just spend this time on. Self think, self reflection. Guide. Yeah. Guide. Okay. And I, I am a rebel. You? I'm a rebel. You're a rebel. Good for you. Congratulations. But I think leaders, uh, purely leadership qualities, comes with time. For example, if India were, would have not been in a situation which which it was, Gandhi might have not taken it. Like you know, for example, Angela Merkel when Europe was actually consolidifying into that, and she came at that time. So yeah. maybe it's a time that makes the leader, rather than leader themselves, right? It's only the times that uh, you know, bring us the leaders that, that we needed, uh, exactly. or we identify. Uh, absolutely, it's a question of time. But when, well that's a systemic approach, I can't, we kind of uh, talked yesterday. When it's good time, some of the leaders reveal themselves. But that doesn't mean that they're not leaders of that type. Of that. They, they are like that, but the, at the good time, some of them reveal themselves. And what I would like to bring in the world <laughs> is that it's always a good time for each of us to reveal ourselves of, uh, as leaders. <laughs> yeah, that's... And make this world a nice better place, better place to live for all species, if possible. Um, yes? No, I don't want to share which I am in part of because I have my question is towards that only. Yeah, yeah. I believe this is not something that is mutually exclusive. Uh, you are some of all of these. Yeah. Uh, because I can see it, if I have to really think through the last two years itself, I could have mm -hmm. seen me in all these four, in some part of the other, mm -hmm. uh, being a rebel in one of the meetings which possibly mm -hmm. even this three levels up management was quiet and I kind of raised a voice. I was the only guy siloed in the room on that. Yeah. But at the same time, I could have been a guide yeah. continuously through my program with my team. I'm a continuously a connector. So I believe, are we, I, I don't want to pro, uh, Fixate on one. My view is, you are, you are, you are at, at some point of time in your career, as he was rightly saying, over the years of leadership that you take up, your characteristic could possibly change. But there is a certain fabric that you would always have. Like if you are a guide Absolutely. and a connector, that will be very belligerent, or that will be something that will be extra. Your rebel is more of a sequent, consequential uh, nature, but the other ones are more your fabric. Absolutely. So thank you for contributing to that presentation. It's a, a fantastic contribution because it's right. We are not exclusively one thing and maybe over time we can change. But exactly as I said, I think we still have our preference and a fabric. Won't you, won't you, aren't you a connector? <laughs> I don't know. Don't, don't answer. Don't answer. Um, or, I mean, uh, not about to, to answer. So this is about archetypes. I wanted to share that with you. Now, what about, OK, what about the agile leader? So that was introduction to the next thing. What about the agile leader? Well, actually, the agile leader has that quality. That's my answer. But, uh, to be aware that we can't be all of them all the time. We all. Uh, and has the quality 
to bring all these types of leadership together. So that's, for me, one of the quality of the, of the agile leadership. Agree, don't agree, something more. Situational, yeah. leadership. Situational leadership. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true, so that's the adaptive thing. But also, what I, my point here is, um, that's a little bit of a connector, is that being aware that all these uh, types of leadership are valuable and um, support that they get, get together and reinforce the collaboration among all these types. So the intention, so that's why my definition of what's the intention of an agile leadership, uh, agile leader, is uh, to support the social e ecosystem to thrive in this world of uncertainty. Because the world is uncertain, we kind of all agree, we also agree all, uh, I think, that we so much would love to control it. Really. You don't want to control a little bit what's, hap uh, what's happening in the next 15 minutes or something? You think I don't want to control what's going on with this presentation? Of course I would like to. <laughs> but the, the, the world is uncertain. And the agile leader is, um, for me, is supporting people so they can thrive in uncertainty. Um, in in the, this world of uncertainty. And how, how can we thrive? What are the qualities? I, I want to go quickly to, through the, the, these qualities of inner leader. Being a continuous learner. What, what that means? That, that means for me, always challenging our own beliefs. Because learning, we can all, uh, I think that because we are at the conference, we all love to learn new things. That's something e easy. Well, we love to see new things, connect dots. What is less easy is to unlearn or relearn. Do you go to a topic where you think you're the best expert in the room, and there's a topic on, on your expertise, and say, hey, I go in that session. Do you do that? Not really. I didn't do that. And I, when I realized I, that I don't do that, I said, I will. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> because there are always other perspectives. And the second thing is unlearn. That is the... the most complicated one to do is because we have learned something that uh, it's uh, converted into truth, and that is true with our beliefs. And deconstructing of our beliefs, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's, um, and really, if you challenge your own beliefs, what I seen and I really think, believe that, it's the, that's our most highest potential. When you deconstruct our beliefs and being, have a curious mind. If someone tells me, um, your talk, Juana, is completely bullshit. I already saw this, blah, blah. Uh, my perfectionist self when I go is, uh, will be hurt. But if I'm putting in a curious mindset, there's a lot of potential because I want to know what, what exactly uh, hurt you. What is really the bullshit, bull, the bullshit thing in the content? And actually, it's a relief, honestly. <laughs> Um, so that's about being a cur uh, always a curious learner. So this was my practical uh, thing to be a curious learner is always when you think that something is true, question that. Stop for a moment and question that. Um, the second, force the skills to see the world from different perspectives. Once again, if something is true for you and you see that someone else completely disagrees with you, 
say, hey, why, if I look at this from a different perspective, what will it take? No. That's Escher. That's one of my favorite, uh, <laughs> one of my, my favorite paint artists. Kind of mathematics into drawings and very, um, um, not, uh, not conflicts, um, I'm skipping the word. Contradictions? No, uh, I'll, I'll say it, uh, um, I'll find the word, words, but you know, it's different perspectives. They, the, those stairs, they, the, uh, you climb, you get down, uh, you never know. Contradiction, that was the word I was sleeping. And uh, to see different per, uh, perspective is something that it could be very theoretical, is be present, where you are. It look, maybe it sounds like something very trivial. Of course, I'm present here. Actually, not really. And I think, I would say that Indian culture, you know that better as, as meditation came from here. <laughs> it's about meditation. Be, actually, we are not really present in the moment. We are present in our head. And we, are we anticipate. So we are present usually in the future. We process the future given the experience of the past all the time. So kind of never present. <laughs> but when you are present, we, you can change perspective, uh, be, create awareness about, hey, how can I become curious in this situation instead of angry or bless, hurt, hurt. Um, and uh, the paradox, that was another word, uh, the VUCA paradox, you know, that's very, um, uh, very fashionable uh, expression. The world is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Uh, that's a paradox, and actually it's an opportunity. Seeing it as opportunity for new things, instead of try to control it. And that's, that's also something really hard to, to bear. Um, and the last one that I want to share is, okay, so all this was what qualities a little bit for, for oneself, and this is a little bit the step toward the second um, dimension, which is a leader generates powerful questions and facilitates the co-creations of answers instead of giving answers. So for me, this is the, an, an agile leadership, so you can say maybe it's contradictory with visionary, who has a vision and go forward. But I think that in, um, in order to really adapt is trust the wisdom of the, of the crowd, <laughs> of the collective, and, and be able to generate questions so that, that people can empower themselves to answer. That's a, another thing that I believe. I don't think we can empower our, other people. The moment that I say that I, I want to empower someone else means that I'm taking that power from them. <laughs> Does that make sense? I will empower you. How does that feel? I will tell you, uh, I know how to empower you. No. <laughs> what we can create is a space so people can empower themselves. So having said that, I think that for all that can be a little bit theoretical, but I would love to have this two minutes. Uh, how do I, I have 15 minutes? OK. So I'm wildly over time. But anyway, I still want to have these two minutes to, or maybe, yeah, two minutes, to look, have an exercise. Look around the room, in this room, and find something that you don't like. You think it's kind of ugly. And then concentrate on that ugliness and try to see what can be beautiful. It's a way to practice all, everything I've said in the last slides. So ten, two minutes.
actually I'll put 130. can even move if you want. If you didn't spot something that, it's kind of ugly. Okay. You see how hard it is to be alone with oneself. <laughs> I've heard people talking. <laughs> and that was an, an exercise for two minutes, and actually it was one minute 30, to just be with yourself and this. Uh, how, how did it went? Anyone want? Yeah, please do share. What I really think I felt is, used water bottles on the tables yeah. and the cables uh, which are lying down there yeah. and the beauty is of this room and the lightings and the door. Okay. <laughs> That's I found in the room of the beauty and the arrangement of the room. That's the beauty. Okay. That maybe it was not clear. The idea is to focus on the ugly thing and what is, can be beautiful in that ugly thing. In this, I mean, we can make it more, uh, I mean, by cleaning itself, uh, fill with the, wa uh, you know, uh, filled water bottles there instead of uh, them, used ones. Okay, thank you. Another uh, answer, and then we'll try to move forward, as I'm wildly over time, but I love conversation. Could I I'll talk about leadership without uh, letting you talk? I'll give you a quick one. So I was just looking around and sitting in the last seat as usual. So um, the... The door, the, 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 this, the wall you can talk yeah. to me, it's a foldable wall. So the bottom of it is actually kind of withered a lot yeah. because it's gone on through. So yeah. it, if you look at it in a normal day, you will not agree. If it's in your house, you will not agree. But the, the beauty thing in that is uh, it stood the time, test of time. Yeah. Like, you know, the, how many occurrences in this room would have happened? Mm -hmm. And it stood the st test of time since it's wood. It's still taking that and it's chipping away but it's still taking the, the hit on it. That's the, that's the thing I was thinking through. Thank you, thank you. A uh, 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 last one, can, yeah, sorry, I really want to go to the sorry. other one. Of course, the ugly one that we just saw is the cables that's running around. Yeah. But just imagine this room without the light. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's so yeah. that's the beauty of, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. you can see the harmony and you know, you have to go with it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you. I will, I will go forward, um, but thank the, do this exercise. Each time something is hard for you and the situation is hard, do this exercise. I say, what is the opportunity? What is beautiful in that bloody situation <laughs> that ages you? So now let's go to the co-leadership. And um, it's a way to develop myself as an inclusive leader with the other one. Um, discover self-discovery by opening a window um, toward the others. A window which is a mirror. <laughs> Other people mirror things about us. So uh, what I'd like to share with you is, uh, is really quickly, because all this is uh, from a long uh, workshop, which uh, could be one day. I have even a program. It's, uh, more than more months <laughs> on that, but that's um, the it, it's a tool that says that each of us has four quadrants. You know, like all uh, consultants invent tools with four quadrants, but I think th these ones are helpful. So the first one is the known known section: what I know about myself and the others know. Is anyone that knows the Yohari window here? Yeah. 
uh, so uh, it's, it's quite a, a, a popular tool. Um, tool. The unknown known by, um, so that's a public session. The, what the others know about me and what I know about me. Uh, the, the, the other section is what, which is, uh, which is tricky, the un unknown by the others and known by me. And that's my secret garden, what I don't reveal to others. Uh, another section which is interesting is what the others know about me and I don't know because I'm not aware of things that uh, I tell story, story to myself. To be, yeah, <laughs> I, blind, and that's the, the, the blind spot, exactly. And the last one, which is really the dark angle, <laughs> uh, which things about me that I don't know about myself and the others don't know. Sorry? Well, what I think is we all have a lot of potential and we don't tap in that potential. And we don't tap in that potential and you know the blind spot, our blind spot is the other know that we have that potential. Um, and we don't know. Exactly. So that was my, 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 okay. What would be interesting? What would be interesting to know more about myself and know more about the others? And know, yeah, and, and create that public spot, make it bigger. How do I do that? Well, actually, uh, what happens is that if, uh, that, that's the, um, the second step, is if I am a very secret person, actually, so I say little about myself to others, actually myself also I know less, less things about myself because other people know things <laughs> about me. So it's like, what I like about that is um, the four quadrants here is that if I move one of the line, actually the other moves. So uh, the, the, that blind spot and that dark spot becomes bigger. If, I'm, uh, if I don't want to know what the others know of, about me, I'm sh shrinking. The, the, the space of known is shrinking. And what a pity, because we don't tap in our potential. But what can... What is really important is how I, can I make that public spot bigger is to ask for feedback. We talk a lot about feedback, but what is important is not really giving feedback and knowing how to receive feedback. And the second is unveil what is vulnerable in you. Why? Because in that, when I, when I ask for feedback, people, I can know more about me that other people know and I don't know. So the blind spot shrinks. And when I'm, I feel my vulnerabilities, and that is a hard thing culturally, we are all heroes. Heroes are perfect. They don't have vulnerabilities. Um, but if I unveil my vu vulnerabilities, that I'm making that public space bigger, and then shrinks that, uh, the, also the blind spot. And I really invite you, and I don't have time to, to, uh, to enter in exercises, but usually when you unveil a, a vulnerability in, uh, uh, that you have, actually you will ha have a demo how people are good. <laughs> because uh, when you say, I, I'm not able to do this, the first reaction of people is, oh, it is about that. I thought, actually, I thought that you were weird because you were hiding something. So I'm, not, I'm not able to do this piece of code. You'll see that other people will help. When you unveil your vulnerabilities, it's a gift you give to others. So they will, 
I, I really want to, to you to reflect uh, uh, reflect on that. It's a gift. I would have uh, could have have an exercise if I had a longer workshop. But uh, let's keep it to this image. Is if you ask for feedback, you push that uh, unknown of self. You will know more about yourself that other people know and you don't know. And when you unveil your vulnerabilities, you tell more to other people about you. You shrink that blind spot and actually you tap in your potential. <laughs> Try it. And um, when that's the conclusion on this part is if, when you open to others, that means you, that you open to yourself. It's another way to say, as Gus said, you tap in, in, into your potential. Um, so I leave you with this. Uh, I won't have a discussion because I think that we really don't have uh, any more time. Uh, but just note this question for yourself and try to answer it afterwards. In your concrete situation, how this can help you. And um, yeah, that's the leader at service. Let's, I would have said five minutes, but let's, uh, I don't have time anymore, and uh, well, questions will be after. <laughs> uh, I would like you for the two minutes and then I'll have feedback. Maybe I'll have two minutes. I will have two minutes uh, after. So, sorry. So for two minutes now, I will invite you to explore the dynamics of the group you are forming right now. Don't um, go away. Two minutes. Two minutes. Can you repeat the activity, please? What? Ex explore group the group the group dynamics of this group. If anyone wants the mic. One minute to go. I'll be two minutes over. Okay, the experiment is over. Um, initially, I wanted it to be five minutes. So the question now is, do I have that, do I have the question? Is, so you see that was 10 minutes, but that uh, wasn't have 10 minutes in a talk, but anyways, is I invite you to explore, and now I have this question for you. In this task I gave you, what was the role that you played? What was, anyone? Anyone? Yes? Go on. What was the role you took? Okay, me. Okay. Um, this is kind of, uh, the moment we talk about it, we started yeah. laughing at it. It's about, it's a unit you know, in our house. 
Yeah. Where two of my boys. Yes. And there's a dog. Okay, and I'm involved in it. Okay, so we four. So we are like, this is about my dog. Okay, which which sometimes you know I I when you said role model, I I feel that you know the dog has so much uh, for me <laughs> to learn from it. First is the patience. Second is when I'm trying to you know. Uh, teach my son something by you know uh, pushing or anything it comes barking at me even though i am the owner <laughs> <laughs> so it's protective most of the times and whenever i'm sad or something you know it comes out and you know empathizes it jumps on me and you know it it you know cajoles me so i mean it's it's not always that you know human who actually demonstrates that particular value but role can change depending upon the situation of course role can change but my we've done an exercise and it is, what was the role you took in this exercise of studying the group dynamic of the group you are here? So what did you do at the service of your group? Someone else, yeah? Uh, we did so so we were trying to understand the problem. Okay, so here someone yeah. tried to understand the problem better. That was how okay. we were contributing. Thank you. Yeah. Someone else? Would yeah. Like? Uh, for example, I allowed him to talk <laughs> on behalf of this group. Exactly. Yeah? So you, <laughs> you were the facilitator. <laughs> so um, what are my point? They have to, I have I have to, uh, two points on that. So this is for me. This is extraordinary. It's a lot of uh, uh, of deep learning in here, but I will try to do it quickly. Is that in each situation, we have a role that serves the group. As you said, uh, well, let's present each other. <laughs> uh, and or you allow someone else or the first one who, who talks. And the second is I put you in a kind of chaotic situation. And this is something what, um, which I said, do this. What? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> that always happens. <laughs> uh, and this is, these situations are very valuable because this is a situation where the implicit can become explicit. We all live by implicit things. But in the situations like that, where I tell you, do this, study your group. W what group? Who? He? When? For two minutes? For ten minutes? For forty minutes? In a, in a workshop, I do that for 40 minutes. Very interesting things happen. <laughs> so just to, to give you where it comes from, it comes from the Tavistock Institute. Uh, it's called the BART model. Actually, every group has boundaries. There's authority, there's thought, and a task. And one of the things when I told you that is that on implicit things, uh, as, as, a, as a speaker, I have a kind of authority. When I gave you those instructions, I gave up the authority because I didn't give you any instructions anymore. But that was something implicit. So this is all. So the, these are the qualities of leader of the service of the group, a quick exercise. And this is the last slide. Sorry for being over time is working with leadership, uh, there are a lot of leaderships, host leadership, servant leadership, agile leadership, and I said, well, let's do just a just leadership manifesto, where I think that, um, yeah, allow things to get done over getting things done. Trust that people will get things done. Welcome that comes, what emerges, instead of seeking perfection. When you seek for, per for per perfection, it's a source of frustration and sadness. <laughs> listen intently, listen to, instead of making uh, statements. So listen to understand instead of making a point. Nurture a shared purpose. What's the purpose? In oversetting expectation. Expectation is another source of frustration. That's why I say I never have expectations. Express power with instead of power over. And that's why I don't like to be on this uh, on the scene. I'm no no way better than you are. So I'm rather stay here. Um, and support the growth of people. 
over compliance. And the last and not the least one, my fear is something uh, I work with. Be brave to trust people. And that was my last word. Thank you. And <laughs>